free trade. It's an issue on which pretty much 101 out of 100 economists agree, close to that. And yet, we've not been able to convince politicians, the public, after, not incidentally, 200 years of trying. We make these relatively abstract arguments based on the principle of comparative advantage. So if I say to people, do you think Florida, which is good at growing oranges, should be trading with Michigan, which is good at building cars, they say, of course. But if I then say, well, how about trade between Israeli oranges and American cars, then people don't look at it the same way. There are many reasons why it's hard to sell free trade, and a principal one among them, well, it's twofold, really, is that there are always losers from trade. If there's some product that a foreign company with low wages suddenly learns how to produce well, well enough to uh, export to America, and there was an incumbent American business making that more expensively, that business and its workers will in fact be hurt. But that ignores the fact that the buyers of that product, um, other Americans, are going to get it cheaper. It also ignores the fact that the whole country will be better off if the American workers that were producing inefficiently that specific product go do something else. In principle, since the whole nation gains from trade, there are more winners than losers, and the winners could compensate the losers. But in fact, we don't. In fact, there are very few compensation mechanisms set up by the U.S. government. So even though, in theory, there's enough largesse for the nation as a whole, so nobody would lose, in practice it doesn't work that way, and people do lose. And they're not dumb about it. When economists make the case for an open, a trade opening, they recognize that some people are going to lose their jobs, and they will have to transition to some other type of employment. And so we call these transitions costs as if, you know, nobody should pay attention to this. It's like as if it's a fleeting event and it will just pass. Well, if you're a 55-year-old steel worker and you lose your job in the steel mill in Pennsylvania, the transition, economists call it, is likely to be the rest of your working life. That is not a small thing to people like that. And I think we in part condemn ourselves to failure by calling these things transition costs. So we should just ban that. Uh, ban the word, and I'd like to ban the concept. These are costs, and people need help coping with these costs.